Hey everybody, I wanted to share this video today. It's a little different kind of video, but this is a video that is going to be along the same lines of the sport professional interview videos that you've seen in the past. Only this interview is going to be me interviewing myself, actually just answering some of the questions uh, that I've asked other sport professionals in uh, the video series that we've done this session. Um, and uh, thought you might like to get to know a little bit more about me other than just the guy that's been tough on you and your grading and everything else. Um, I really just wanted to share that with you. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so just to tell you a little bit about who I am, um, my name is Tim Rice, and I am originally from Robertsdale, Alabama. Uh, for those of you who are there at Mobile, of course, you probably know where Robertsdale is. It's right across the bay from Mobile. I uh, was fortunate to grow up in that small community. Went to Robertsdale High School. Um, was a three-sport athlete in high school, um, but was really good in track and field and cross-country running, distance running. And so uh, I didn't do a great job in my classes during my uh, school time there at Robertsdale. So I ended up going to junior college and I was a basketball manager for a guy named Sid Elliott at Enterprise State Junior College in Enterprise, Alabama. Uh, I was a full ride scholarship manager, which uh, was something that was really cool. I remember just my jaw dropping when I found out I was getting a full tuition scholarship with books. It was an amazing gift and it's where I got my start really and, and my love for wanting to go into coaching because my original major was studio art, if you can believe that. I was a, um, an art major to start cl uh, my college years. And um, I went from being someone who did paintings and renderings uh, and things like that to drawing X's and O's on a whiteboard. Um, ended up leaving Enterprise and going to Mobile College, of course, now University of Mobile, in 1990. And I was a part of the very first cross-country team at Mobile in 1990. Fortunate to be on three conference and district championship teams, ran in three national meets and AI national meets. And was fortunate to be a team captain there as well. And, and also I was a student assistant for Bill Elder, who was a gentleman who basically started the athletic program at University of Mobile way back when. Um, some would say the glory days uh, during a time when um, athletics more or less built a school. Um, when the athletic program started at Mobile in 1985-86, there were only 625 students at Mobile. By the time I graduated in 1993, there were over 2,100 students. So athletics had a huge impact on that uh, as it was growing. And back in those days, we were one of the top NAI athletic programs in the entire country. In fact, we were second in what used to be known as the Sears Cup, the Director's Cup, um, for the entire NAI for athletics. Um, and at that time, there were 450 members, almost 500. Uh, it was at its zenith time, basically, uh, in the history of the NAI. Um, graduated in 1993 from Mobile with a physical education, a bachelor's degree, a BS in Phys Ed uh, with a history minor, and then uh, proceeded after that to coach all over the United States. Um, first stop was at Faith Academy right there in Mobile um, as the sixth and seventh grade B team boys basketball coach. And then I also was an assistant with the varsity boys and then the head track and field coach that year of 93-94. I left after that year and went to Pillsbury College in Minnesota where I met my wife Candy. And she uh, is a former National Christian College All-American in two different sports. It was a three-sport athlete in college. And um, we've been married almost 24 years. And we both have coached or been in athletic administration at one time or other. But I met her in Minnesota, in southern Minnesota, at Pillsbury College, which no longer exists, unfortunately. Um, was there for two years and then left and um, ended up getting the athletic director and head men's basketball and soccer coach position at Calvary University. Back in those days, it was known as Calvary Bible College in Kansas City, Missouri. Was there for two years and ended up going to Williamstown, Massachusetts to Williams College, which is considered the best athletic program in all of NCAA Division III. Um, while I was there, I completed my mentorship, my internship 
for my master's degree at the U.S. Sports Academy. I worked with a guy by the name of Harry Sheehy at Williams, who went on to become the uh, athletic director at Dartmouth in the Ivy League. And um, great experience to go up there and do that. After uh, the Williams experience in 99-2000, I ended up at Grove City College um, in Pennsylvania, just south, uh, actually north rather, of uh, Pittsburgh, about an hour. And I was uh, assistant professor of physical education there, also the head uh, men's and women's golf coach, and one year head men's and women's cross country coach, and assistant men's basketball coach. So I was a busy, busy guy. Um, had a lot of success there. And then and that led me to becoming the head men's basketball coach at Hiram College in Ohio, where I was at for three years. Um, ended up after that, 19, in 2006, moving to Denver, Colorado, and uh, was away from athletics for two years, worked in the business world and sales, and then got back into athletics when I started working um, as a national faculty member with the United States Sports Academy in 2008, and also as a special assistant to the women's basketball coach at the University of Denver, uh, which at the time was a member of the Sunbelt Conference. Um, coached high school basketball in the Austin, Texas area at Regent School of Austin, had a lot of success for three years, and then stepped away and have been doing my own um, practice called, uh, actually business called uh, basketballmentoring.com, where I work with coaches all over the United States and now all over the world. Um, so I work with them on sports psychology. I work with them on uh, a lot of different areas pertaining to drills and how to motivate players and scouting reports and video analysis and analytics and the whole ball of wax. So, um, you know, I earned my doctoral degree in, um, I earned my master's degree in 1999, December, and earned my doctoral degree from U.S. Sports Academy in 2005, which was a huge accomplishment. I um, never thought in a million years I would have that chance to do that because um, I just never really cared about school, but um, it took me all the way until my uh, final year of my, or final degree to actually graduate with honors. Um, I never was really on the honor roll or anything until I actually walked across and was hooded for my doctorate in 2005. Um, you know, currently work for five universities. I'm uh, full-time as the, do the doctor of psychology program director and the lead faculty member for sport and performance psychology at Ashford University in San Diego, California. Um, by the way, my wife and I call San Marcos, Texas home. Um, we are typically all over the place, but that is our home. Um, right now we're in North Dakota and uh, we'll be heading back to Texas here pretty soon. But um, I uh, earned my doctoral degree and it just opened up a lot of doors for me. Um, my experience in sport coaching and sport administration uh, it really has helped me be able to climb the ladder in this business. Um, and so I worked for Ashford full time. I worked for the United States Sports Academy, University of Mobile, Castleton University in Vermont, and Concordia University in Texas um, as an adjunct faculty member. So I keep myself very busy. I'm also involved with Basketball Ireland on the Elite Performance Committee, which is the governing body of the basketball international program that all the teams that uh, represent Ireland uh, will actually, that play in European championships, actually I'm part of the governing structure for that. So really um, had a great opportunity uh, to spend almost a year in the Republic of Ireland and West of Ireland and Galway. As you've seen some of the videos, we've had some Irish professionals on there and uh, some of the nicest people you'd ever meet. Um, very fortunate to get over there twice a year. And then uh, coming up here in November of 2019, we'll be heading back to Ireland, but we'll also be heading to the Republic of Moldova, which is in Eastern Europe and is the poorest country in Europe. Uh, the average uh, annual income of a family is about 250 American dollars. So it's a, a very poor area, but we're gonna be heading there in November of 2019, my wife Candy and I had to work with Admirals Basketball Academy, which is a Christian basketball club founded by David Robinson, the legendary Hall of Fame center from the San Antonio Spurs. Um, and so that's a little bit about me and how I, what I've done in the sports world. Um, you know, uh, I think one of the biggest challenges that I face in a day-to-day -day 
um, context as far as in the sports industry is really just, I think the biggest thing is staying up to speed with the, the many changes that go on. Um, there's so much information out there, as you know, in the class that you, you've been taking here in sport marketing, it, it takes an awful lot of, uh, you have to stay on your toes all the time and keep up with the trends, keep up with all the different things that are going on. Um, I think another big challenge pertaining to what I do in the online teaching world is really just the, um, you know, the motivation of students trying to motivate and trying to help them be able to understand that an online class is not easy. I think some of you probably thought that you were going to get into this class and it was just going to be a cakewalk. That's kind of not how it works, um, at least not in the classes I teach. Um, I, I think the biggest challenge is trying to make sure that students understand that I'm here to help students out and provide the tools and the things that are necessary to be successful in the class. And, uh, and I seriously want students to be successful. It's not my intention to fail anyone, uh, but I think sometimes students uh, decide that, you know, they don't want to work hard. They don't want to do the things that they need to do. And, um, you know, you're looking at somebody that's basically uh, uh, has worked very, very hard. I've worked extremely hard over the last 30 years um, to climb this ladder. Um, I wouldn't say I'm where I want to be, but I'm certainly closer to it than I used to be. Um, and I think that uh, the challenge is trying to get students to understand, and not to mention students, but also coaches that I work with understand that there's more to the game than just winning and losing. Um, I think that a lot of times folks think that, you know, we're such a win-win-win society, but ultimately it's about relationships. It's about developing trust. And it's also about, you know, sticking to the standards that you set. And if any of you guys are, you know, if any of you gals are interested in going into coaching, that's one of the things that, or even in the sport administration period, you know, there, there are, um, I think one of the biggest things is you have to stand firm to what you believe in and, um, and do the best job you can to prepare. You know, as you know, for me, I'm very, very firm and, and, tough and hard knows when it comes to specific areas of your guys work but it's not because i'm trying to be a jerk about it i just want you guys to understand that in this business this is not an easy field it's not you know you've probably heard of the 90 10 rule or uh, which says that 90 percent of people make 10 percent of the money in sport and 10 percent of the people make 90 percent of the money in sport that's kind of how the sport industry works um, for those people that have gotten to the point where they can get higher in the um, food uh, chain, I suppose, or the pecking order. Um, it all depends on what, you know, what you do to get to that point. It's all about preparation. It's about presentation. It's about working hard. It's about developing a network and uh, all these things are things you've heard. It's not like, a, uh, you know, the professionals that you, I interviewed before, you know, I certainly didn't give them a cheat sheet. They, they said what they believed uh, was important. And um, I think it's extremely important to follow the things that you've learned on those. Um, now, as far as what are some uh, skills that are essential for success in this field, um, the biggest thing I think in, um, in sport management, skills are things that we talked about the ability to network, the ability to work hard, the ability to present yourself well, those are extremely important skills that you have to have. You also have to have the ability to have some intuition and to be able to understand if something's about to happen. I know it sounds crazy, but imagine if you're on a softball field or you're on the volleyball court and you can intuit, you like can basically instinctively read what's gonna happen next because of your training and your preparation. Same thing's true in sport management. It takes an awful lot of ability to really uh, read and understand what's about to happen. You kind of have to look a few frames ahead. Um, of course, uh, you know, Declan King talked about passion in his video. I don't think there's any question that that's a very important uh, part of this uh, field and, and doing well in it because there are a lot of times you might not get paid a cent, you know. I can say it was like three times in my career I didn't get paid anything. In fact, I worked for Basketball Ireland and I do it pro bono. 
um, because I love the game and I want to make a difference in, in the country over there. Um, so, you know, it, those are some definite skills that you need to have. Um, as far as actual, uh, another question, um, how important is networking in this field, of course, and how do I approach networking? Well, I think you all understand what my feelings are about networking um, and also have heard it from the others that have been interviewed. But for me, uh, when I look at the approach to networking, it's all about relationships. It's all about developing connections and doing what you have to do, whether that is, um, I think one of the biggest things that's a challenge with young people today is, is an appreciation for somebody giving time and effort to actually spend with you to share what they've learned. You know, I think uh, we talked a little bit in the video with Jake Reed earlier um, in the semester about the importance of thank you notes. Thank you notes are so incredibly important. And uh, I have actually been able to secure large fund, uh, funded opportunities when I worked in the nonprofit fundraising world um, by just sending a, a note out, a personal note that was handwritten to someone. Um, you know, networking is all about um, not just trying to get something from the person, but getting having an actual true relationship. When you think about the people that I interviewed, by the way, all of them are my friends. They're all people that have climbed the ladder, and that's just a small tip of the iceberg when it comes to most of the people I've um, known and I've uh, mentored uh, that I haven't even interviewed yet. And you know, being able to have opportunity like that to see successful people go out and do things. You know, for me, I think that it, you folks today have a problem with being appreciative for the opportunity and not really being truly thankful for it. And, you know, every time that I have a situation where I talk with someone or I meet with someone, I always try to get a handwritten thank you note or um, an email or whatever I can do and and really just thank them uh it's really important um as far as presenting yourself well you know we talked a lot about that in this class um one of the biggest challenges that i think with you all at times uh is that there are you rush through things and you and you don't necessarily think about what you typed out or what you've written out and listen i'm not saying i'm perfect believe me i make mistakes too a lot <laughs> Um, but I think that being able to present yourself well by reading through the information out loud and making sure that the sentence sounds right. And if you have to check the darn thing five times, check it five times. Um, and then if you need to check it again, check it again. But being meticulous and being able, because, you know, a great story I have when I was uh, an assistant coach at Grove City College, I drove over to Philadelphia and I um, walked into the president's office at um, Eastern University in St. David, Pennsylvania, in Philly area, and uh, sat down with the president and to talk with him about my, just a cold call, just showed up, and uh, to express my interest in the men's basketball available coaching position for basketball. And I showed up with a resume that had errors on it had the wrong school, didn't even have University of Mobile on the resume, I had the United States Sports Academy for my bachelor's degree. And I just, it was the most embarrassing thing I've ever had happen. And I was even older than you guys are, about, about eight years older. And so, you know, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I think that it's extremely important that when you have a chance to present yourself, present yourself well, and there's a reason why we're doing the Zoom presentation for the final plan because I want to see you guys before you graduate. I want to be able to see you come up with a PowerPoint presentation. I want to see you present it. I want to see you be able to orally uh, present it, visually present it, and write it out in a way that is well written and organized and detailed because that is going to matter in the world that you guys go into. You know, um, another thing too is extremely important. You know, when you have people that reach out to you it's important that you reach back to them as fast as you possibly can. You can't wait and ignore emails. This is something that I've noticed in this class and it's not really an acceptable thing. You all can get fired in the world that we're in if you, if you do that. So break the habit now, okay, do it now. Um, if there's one piece of advice that I would give to anyone that's deciding to go into this uh, field of sports, um, 
management or even whatever field you want to go into in sport is this understand that it's not glitz and glamour you know that it is a very hard business it there's a lot of work and a lot of late hours um, when I was a head men's basketball coach and Candy, my wife, was the sports information and marketing director at Hiram College when we were there, we both worked 85 to 95 hours a week. And uh, it wasn't healthy. Um, fortunately for us, we've changed our tune when it comes to that now. But you're going to work a lot of hours. You know, you're going to be asked to do a lot of different things. So it's extremely important. One piece of advice I would give you. Don't think that this is going to be a glitz and glamour world. It's going to be something that's going to um, at times be hard. It's going to be sometimes you're going to go, why am I doing this? Um, but in the end, if you have a true passion for something, just like what Declan King said back when he had his video interview with me, if you've got true passion for something, you have to follow that lead. You know, for me, I've, uh, my wife and I have lived in nine different states and you know, one other thing I want to share with you all, and this is something you may not know about me, but um, my wife Candy and I have been full-time RVers since 2010, and we're not living in it right now, um, but uh, we have actually, for almost eight, nine years, we've been full-time RVers, been to 43 states in the RV, been to six Canadian provinces, we've taken it up the Alaska Highway, and all because of the, the career path that I took and the education that I got it matters a great deal. Um, I want all of you to understand this. Um, as we get going, of course, you're going to be watching this video and you may watch it after the Zoom presentation um, that we'll have, or you may watch it before. But just know this, that there is always a method to what I do as a faculty member. And uh, my intention was to try to dig out as much as I could to help you all understand that if this is a hard, if you think that the class is a hard situation, to deal with, imagine going, putting that five or 10 times more in the world of um, sport management or sports. It's not easy. So just understand that you're gonna have to work hard, you're gonna sacrifice, um, and just use the things that you've learned. You know, I mean, hopefully you've gotten a lot from this last four months. I mean, I, I hope so. Um, you know, just know that I'm always gonna be, if you wanna contact me, um, you know, uh, I will give you my uh, email right now. It's Dr. Tim Rice, D R T I M R I C E at gmail.com. If you ever have questions or want some advice, I'm more than happy to offer that. But uh, I wanted to just offer this uh, little different kind of um, and a little bit less uh, time consuming too video uh, interview of myself just to share more about, you know, who I am. And, um, you know, I think that we've, uh, had a great, my wife Candy and I have had an incredible run. We've had an incredible life. And when I look at where my love for sport truly took off, it was when I was wearing the, the maroon and white of the, of the Mobile College Rams. And it's something that I will always cherish. Um, it's something that I, I have so much respect for um, the coaches that worked with me, that mentored me through the years. And you know, it's my hope that you all will go out and do your part to impact the world for Christ. Um, and that's the one thing that's so incredibly important, um, that Mobile is a school that's a true Christian college. It's a school where you can truly um, seek his face and be able to uh, become, basically follow him. And I think that was, for me, it was a great opportunity to grow spiritually there and I've used that ever since. Am I perfect? Mm -mm. But I would say that, you know, one of the things with uh, I'm, I am is an incredibly proud Mobile alum. And I know you all are about to be as well. Congratulations on almost finishing. And uh, it's been an honor and pleasure to work with you. I know I've been tough, but it certainly hasn't been because I'm trying to be a jerk. I just want to see you all be as good as you possibly can be. I will see you in class and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. You don't have to respond about any of it. We're just putting it up there for you to take a look at, okay? Enjoy the rest of your uh, next few weeks for graduation. And again, thanks for all the effort that you put in the last four months, okay? Take care.